The most easily offended and censorious people are usually those with the closest proximity to power. There's an inverse correlation between how outraged you are by speech you disagree with and how likely that speech is to actually hurt you. And I don't mean like individually powerful people here, I mean hegemonically powerful people, people in the dominant group, white people, men, straight people, that kind of thing. The powerful and privileged are the least likely to being challenged, to being upset, and the least likely to experience consequences for any overreaction we might have. Basically, we can say whatever and, and nobody ever jumps up our entire asshole about it. Like say, if women said they felt more comfortable around bears than dudes, people might absolutely lose their minds about that, but I can say whatever dumb shit I want. Once you notice this, you start to see it everywhere. The people with no real reason to be upset being the loudest and most upsettest about nothing, shouting directly over minority groups how ball bustingly irate they are about grievances that would be trivial even if they hadn't been imagined. Fucking pronouns! But there's one group of people who right now are really changing the game in terms of phony, weaponized outrage directed at people who they themselves are hurting. I'm of course referring to the humble Zionist. Please observe the exact phenomenon I am describing distilled into its purest essence. If you expect me to argue that Israel's actions in Gaza and Palestine generally constitute a genocide, or that Israel is an ethno-nationalist project whose existence is premised on the extermination of the indigenous population, I'm not going to do that. That's merely the truth. I'm not particularly interested in humoring the people who continue to pretend otherwise. This video isn't meant to convince anyone to support the Palestinian cause because, you know, like if like if you're not already supporting that, I don't. I, you're not reachable. If watching thousands of people be brutally murdered didn't move you, what the fuck am I going to say to convince you to become a human being? For the record, if, if you're looking for a video like that, there, there's some in the description below from creators who are more suited to it and have more patience than I. No, I have a much more modest purpose in mind for this video, one which I believe I'm far better equipped to handle. I just want to point and laugh at the way that Zionists portray themselves as the victims of their own oppressive behavior. That is what we will be discussing today. They deserve to be mocked, to at all times have the humiliating cowardice at the center of their worldview exposed for all to see, and importantly, for everyone to laugh at. You know, it's a difficult time to be a Zionist. Support for a genocide can be bad for your personal brand. It is therefore in the interest of a Zionist to portray any and all criticism of their positions, or Israel's actions in general, in the most hyperbolic terms they can possibly imagine. World-ending stakes, complete fantasy bullshit. If they exaggerate enough, hopefully, you won't think about their positions, or why they might hold them, or who they might kill as a result. Naturally, the easiest way to do that is to smear all criticism of Israel and anything the Israeli government does as inherently anti-Semitic. That's always been the number one play in the Zionist handbook. To basically press control F and everywhere someone uses the word Israel, replace that with the Jews and just pretend their critics said that instead. Wouldn't that be fucked up if they said that? Perhaps some of you are at this moment concern trolling as we speak, furiously typing away in the comments about how dare I, a non-Jewish person, dare to say what is and is not anti-Semitic. And ordinarily, I'd agree. But you know, the specific accusation of anti-Semitism being thrown at Palestinians simply for being alive people who would like to be alive in their homes is really not worth taking seriously. It has no merit and belittles the threat of genuine anti-Semitism, but more importantly, is itself a racist myth used to justify mass murder. And I know you, you little Zionist freaks, you're out there and you're right now posting a, a bunch of different times that you saw a Palestinian person or someone who supports Palestinian people doing something anti-Semitic. And like, yeah, no shit, dog. Anti-Semitism exists everywhere. If you see someone of a particular ethnic group do something anti-Semitic, I don't think that means you get to wipe that ethnic group off the map. So go ahead and shut the entire fuck up. Maybe it's not my place to say, but like, doesn't seem like they listen when Holocaust survivors say it. So whose place is it exactly? kind of feels like they just don't want people to say it. And it, it should go without saying, but won't go without saying, so I will have to say it, that so long as there's been Zionism, there's also existed Jewish resistance to Zionism. Jewish people are not, and have never been, our enemy in this fight. On the contrary, they are, and have always been, and will continue to be, some of our most outspoken allies. No people are a monolith, and no people deserve to be treated as a monolith. That's one of the reasons why, for example, it's a war crime to commit collective punishment, according to the Geneva Convention. Something to think about.
But you can see already how we're made to jump through these hoops to even express support for Palestinians. Zionists position the conflict between Israel and Palestine as uniquely complicated, uniquely divisive, and therefore something we must be uniquely sensitive about. But of course, only sensitive to their feelings. Forget the material realities or the fucking well-being of Palestinians or Arabs. No, they gotta be portrayed as, as monstrous terrorists without any legitimate grievances who just kill because of their fucked up monster brains before a Zionist will even come to the table. To do otherwise, to think that this racial group is anything but a bunch of backwards monster people in the minds of the Zionist is the racist position, actually. It's racist not to hate this particular race. And this strategy has usually worked out in the past because the countries with all of the money and power and all of the corporations who those countries work for are generally on board with whatever Israel wants to do. That's why they put Israel there in the first place, to, to do that. Those national and corporate interests have the influence and money to make themselves heard, while some dispossessed Palestinian grandmother isn't likely to get to plead her case on CNN. And if she does manage it by some miracle, you can always just yell, do you condemn Hamas at her until she goes away? Also, you know, just like the general Islamophobia of the West. That's also helpful for them. You know, it's, it's, it's easier to dehumanize a group of people who a lot of people are already super racist against. So they have that going for them. Yippee! Of course, the math changes somewhat when our social media feeds are all flooded with a constant barrage of evidence of Israeli war crimes carried out by Israeli forces, Israel fully. Evidence they can no longer suppress and are desperate to convince us to just ignore because they can't square it with anything they claim to believe. Some wonder why there was such overwhelming support uh, for us to shut down potentially TikTok or other entities of that nature. If you look at the uh, postings on TikTok and the number of mentions of Palestinians relative to other social media sites, it's overwhelmingly so among uh, TikTok um, uh, uh, broadcast. Oh my God, he admitted it. Fair enough, it is difficult to form a coherent counter argument to thousands of dead children. Like that's, that's gonna be more convincing. So instead of even trying to come up with a justification or like, you know, not murdering all of the children, they've kind of just settled on getting very mad and because they're mad, that means that you hurt them because they're mad. Uh, and it, actually it hurt my feelings when you said that the use of white phosphorus is a war crime. That made me feel unsafe. That's actually anti-Semitic that you said that. And, I, and so I think the government should make it illegal for people to say that. In response, there is a tendency for those of us on the side of human life to couch our words, to be proactively conciliatory and defensive in the hopes that nothing we say can be made to sound anti-Semitic or scary or kind of rude. But boy, what a waste of time and energy that is, because they're more than happy to twist themselves into knots to imply anything you say, no matter how benign, displays the secret anti-Semitism you're doing just out of sight. It's very frustrating to see the same people who've spent the last decade stringently arguing with us every step of the way that we're all simply too sensitive and imagining the rising anti-Semitism among the mainstream right, now crying crocodile tears about how scared they are about the alleged anti-Semitism of... Holocaust survivors and Jewish student groups. The real threats to Jewish people, to be sure. Sometimes, quite literally, the exact same people who were urging us to befriend literal exterminationist neo-Nazis now claiming with a straight face that we are making room for anti-Semitism by expressing a distaste for genocide. This is how you get more chaos on campus, more anti-Semitism on campus, because you've given them cover, you've given them reason to continue this extremism. And a yeah. lot of the extremism is anti-Semitism and they're using it as an excuse in order to promote their anti-Semitism. Like they'll get so up in arms about the phrase from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free about how that's a threat. And it supposedly means that Palestinians are gonna wipe out all of the Jews in Israel, which I would argue is actually not necessary in order for people to be free. One will note that when Palestine was free, they like, didn't do that. They are not motivated by an ancient desire to wipe out the Jews, as certain presidents would have you believe. Okay, yeah, when Biden said that, he was he was talking about Hamas, but his Zionists are keen to remind us they don't really draw a distinction between Hamas and Palestinians writ large. You don't realize that college campuses erupted with the kids demonstrating for Hamas? They are in with the terrorists? No, they, were, they were for the Palestinians. Well, it's sort of the same cause. This is why this is not yours. Make, make, this is make my, some this hard noises. This is, <laughs> this is my not your thing. One must ask, if you believe that someone else wanting freedom necessitates them killing you and everyone like you, 
What does that mean about what you're doing? I don't think there is some zero-sum balance where either Palestinians are free or Jews are alive. Uh, I think it can be both. And if you think it can't, the question arises, why not? Seems like a pretty easy balance to strike, actually. But of course, when any Israeli official says they're going to hold the same territory. The future, the state of Israel have to control on the entire area from the river to the uh, sea. And also, Israel starts like actually wiping out the population to get it here in the non-hypothetical real world. Somehow, that is them defending themselves, saying we would like to be free. That's a threat. Killing you? That's self-defense. Well, they have a right to defend themselves from all of the NICU babies and journalists that threaten their national security. They have a right to exist. And if in order to exercise that right, they have to prevent other people from existing, you know, you can admit like the part that they claim is the part they don't like, right? About from the river to the sea, that the, that's the part that is supposed to be so threatening. But if you just say free Palestine, they'll still say that's a threat against them. How dare you demand freedom? Your freedom puts me in jeopardy somehow. And I think we can all agree that my safety is more important than your freedom. And when they can't even find this flimsy a pretext to twist your words, they'll just all agree to pretend you said something you didn't. Just completely replace whatever it is you said with a different thing. Last November, the actor Melissa Barrero was fired from the upcoming film Scream 7 after making some remarks on her personal Instagram page about the conflict. When questioned about her firing, Spyglass Pictures claimed that her statements contained the anti-Semitic trope of Jews controlling the media, which I think we can agree is quite a serious accusation. Let us now investigate this claim. What I'll do first is read the words that she wrote and see if those words, or similar words, are contained within. Here's what she posted. I have been actively looking for videos and information about the Palestinian side for the last two weeks or so, following accounts, etc. Why? Because Western media only shows the other side. Why they do that, I will let you deduce for yourself. Usually, the algorithm on social media gets the gist. Well, my Discover page on IG will only show me videos showing and talking about the Israeli side. Censorship is very real. Well, let me just crunch the numbers here, carry the five, and hey, look at that, the results are in. The post does not say anything of the sort. Aren't you just so shocked and surprised? Being as charitable as I can, giving Spyglass the biggest possible benefit of the doubt, I can see how one might read that message in to what she is saying. There's certainly nothing in her post which is incompatible with that reading, I suppose. If one is inclined to be an anti-Semite, the phrase, why they do that, I will let you deduce for yourself, could certainly be read as tacit support for all of their hateful conspiracy bullshit. It, they might see that as a little dog whistle for them, yum yum little treat for the anti-Semites out there. The main quality of conspiracy theorists, anti-Semitic or otherwise, is seeing patterns in things which don't actually exist. They're pretty primed to do that actually, like if they see a triangle somewhere, that reads to them as, as a secret message about who runs the government. Could she have been more careful to make that distinction clear? Sure, sure I guess, but like... That doesn't mean she said that thing. When one doesn't deliberately read a hateful message into what she said, she is indisputably correct. Western media does ignore the Palestinian side of the conflict. My country's national broadcaster, among many other mainstream news outlets, has an unofficial policy of not even using the word Palestine outside of a direct quote. And you really can't ignore Palestinians harder than that. None of this is a conspiracy theory. They'll happily tell you. When CBC did use the word Palestine outside of this context, they sent out a fucking apology. None of this requires requires that Jews control the media, because like, here's your first clue, it's true here on Earth, where they don't. The Belgians do. Or like when Greta Thunberg was holding a little stuffed octopus when she criticized Israel's war crimes. We shouldn't be talking or thinking about the things she's saying. Let's all stay focused on how that's definitely a coded message meant to remind us of a political cartoon the Nazis made that very few people today would be familiar with. This one looks just like that. Look at it. Look at his short little stubby tentacles, which seem almost specifically designed to avoid being wrapped around things, thus rendering the visual metaphor she is definitely for real alluding to completely inert. There's simply no other explanation for someone to have a toy around. It's not as though this specific toy has a particular symbolism already associated with it that she was likely alluding to, or that it's just like a popular little toy. We all agreed a long time ago that octopuses are basically the swastikas of the sea, can't have those
shows on display because of the symbolism that we're all very familiar with about how octopuses are anti-Semitic. Case closed, I think, on that one. A few months ago, there was a protest here in Toronto where people marched from the Israeli consulate down a major road to protest Israel's invasion of Rafa. Along their route, there was a hospital called Mount Sinai. Relevant context for you lucky non-Torontonians out there. Mount Sinai was originally established so that Toronto's Jewish population would have a safe place to get medical treatment without being subject to anti-Semitism in the 1920s. Now at times, it's just a regular, regular hospital where anyone, Jew or Gentile alike, can go to get hospital stuff done, like to get your fingers and toes swapped. So protesters were walking past this hospital, and two people climbed onto an awning and waved a Palestinian flag. Um, and as we move forward, I want you to keep in mind that what I just described is the whole controversy. A different thing didn't happen, and that will be important context because this event has been portrayed by many people as a an attempt to intimidate Jewish people, an anti-Semitic hate crime even. Jubbins Trudeau, the president and CEO of Canada, noted racism expert, had this to say. The demonstration at Mount Sinai Hospital yesterday was reprehensible. Hospitals are places for treatment and care, not protests and intimidation. I strongly condemn this display of anti-Semitism in Toronto and across Canada. We stand with Jewish communities against this hate. And just apropos of nothing, here's a little photo of Justin Trudeau applauding a volunteer for the Waffen SS a few months prior. Thank God he's here to stand up to anti-Semitism. Rest easy, Canadian Jews. Justin Trudeau's on the case. Doug Ford, the impressively wide premier of Ontario, had this to say. You want to protest? Go down to City Hall, come down to Queen's Park, jump up and down, do whatever you want, but don't prohibit people going to a hospital when they're in there saving people's lives because you never know. You might be the next person in that hospital and they'll be trying to save your life. When I see Doug Ford, I, I hear his voice as Don Cherry's voice, and that's as close as I can get to an impression of Don Cherry. But I do like that he just imagined a different thing happened. Now the protesters were prohibiting people from going into the hospital because they walked past it, you see. What if someone was having a heart attack and they saw that, and, and because the people were walking around, they were too scared to go to the hospital? I mean, it didn't happen, but what if it did? That wouldn't look so good. Makes you think. Once again, trying to be as, as charitable as I possibly can. Um, I don't think people should be climbing on hospital awnings. I think that's a bad thing to do. Generally, you could fall down and hurt yourself. You could cause some damage to hospital property, conceivably. I will go so far as to say that that rises to the level of mischief, bordering even on nuisance. If I had been there, I think I, I would have delivered a stern finger wagging and said, tisk tisk" quite sharply. What I don't think is appropriate is, is to claim that this was meant as some sort of threat or intimidation tactic, because... I don't think it was. If you look closely, one of the guys who's climbing around is dressed in a Spider-Man costume, and doing that, to me, makes it pretty difficult to be frightened. Spider-Man uh, is not a figure of terror, despite what you might have read in the Daily Bugle. Spider-Man is more a, a figure of children's lunchboxes. And it also goes part of the way towards explaining why someone might be overzealous about climbing stuff, because you kind of want to climb stuff if you're dressed as Spider-Man, the famous climbing guy. But of course, we must respect the sanctity of hospitals. Let's keep politics out of hospitals and to interfere with the day-to-day -day functioning of a hospital. Even by simply walking past one, why that's reprehensible, beyond the pale. Only a monster would do that. And, and I'm trying to keep this video pretty light, and, and I certainly don't want to assume an incandescent rage that doesn't belong to me, but it is difficult to overstate the evil on display here. For these men to grandstand about the sanctity of hospitals in order to slander these protesters and portray them as racist demagogues while the nation whose actions they are protesting has bombed. Really can't stress this hard enough. Every single hospital in Gaza, most if not all, being reduced to rubble, and also like withheld medical aid so that surgeons are forced to operate without anesthetic, and also like we've discovered mass graves outside of hospitals where patients and doctors have been executed. Anything to say about that, Mr. Prime Minister? No? Too mad about people protesting it? Cool. Good. There needs to be a word that goes beyond coward, because I think, unlike the, the hero-coward spectrum, Justin Trudeau represents a sort of ultra-cowardly ray that is not visible to the human eye. The real crime here is that somebody might have felt intimidated when they saw Spider-Man wave a flag at them. That disrupts the hospital's operation, unlike a cruise missile. How does one go about satirizing this? Like, how do you even start? Usually what you'd want to do is you'd want to, like, exaggerate for comedic effect. And I, I genuinely don't know how to make this eviler. 
None of it has to make any sense. There's no way to discuss the genocide that would appease people who simply don't want you to talk about it. They will say and do anything to distract, pull focus, and muddy the waters. Once you're willing to make these kind of patently ridiculous arguments in order to defend the mass murder of thousands of innocent people while simultaneously claiming the moral high ground, there's no reasoning with that. And if history has taught us anything, it's that that type of attitude must not be appeased. We certainly don't owe them the courtesy of disputing their bad faith interpretations of our words or the clumsy vile reframing they insist on so they can pretend to be anything but the bloodthirsty fascist collaborators they are. No matter how stringently polite and respectful we attempt to be, it will not matter. They will manufacture some secret insidious hidden message to anything we say. It's desperate, it's pathetic, and I think people are starting to realize that. I think people are starting to realize we need not argue with the made-up positions they're pretending to believe in order to distract from reality. It's all just a smokescreen, a cloud of ink, which are squids, not octopuses, don't start with me. They want to make criticism of their beliefs and actions dangerous and costly because they know their beliefs and actions will not withstand that criticism. So just withstand the weaponized outrage, don't be led into a discussion of whatever focus group, inane talking point they've concocted, Keep their feet to the fire about the ethnic cleansing being carried out right now in the real world that they are supporting and ignore whatever fantasy bullshit they imagine to distract you. Just tell them that they're little freaks and to fuck off. That's, that's the long and short of it. <laughs> it's they're little freaks and they need to shut the fuck up. It should never be comfortable for them to, to speak these heinous opinions. They should, they should get stink eye. They should be laughed at and run out of town on a rail. I suppose I should say out loud on video that uh, like any ad revenue that this video generates on the off chance that it's not demonetized will go to some sort of Palestinian relief charity, probably the PCRF. I, I do think it's going to be demonetized. So uh, what I'll do in that case is just donate whatever the usual video gets in ad revenue uh, instead. Um, and I'm saying that at the end of the video so that most people won't see it and they'll get very mad in the comments saying that I'm only being controversial for money. Yeah, but in general, if you if you disagree with anything I've said in this video, please let me know. Go ahead and, and leave that big that big comment you're writing because I will not, I won't delete it. Don't worry about that. Not gonna delete your comment. I'm gonna spend all my time arguing with people in the comments for sure. If you If you spend a long time writing a big unwieldy essay in the comments, Rest assured, I will read all of it and take it seriously and definitely respond to it and give you a lot of my time and energy. So go ahead and do that. Go ahead. Debate me, coward.